Amen. Wow, get how bright the lights are. <laughs> Amen. Well, it is such a blessing to be in the house of the Lord with my peeps, my people in the faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, I want to just also say to those that may be watching online, um, even though you may not be physically with us, this word is for you too, so receive in Jesus' name. And then um, I'm excited for what the Lord has put in me to share this morning, but before I actually get to that, I want to turn to my pastor and just say, I appreciate you. I appreciate you and Pastor Monica for, first of all, being obedient to come from Texas and start this ministry. Amen? Taking a step of faith, because now we're all here, and we get the opportunity to, to be blessed and be, you know, benefit from what the Lord has for us. So I just want to say thank you for your support, your encouragement, and then actually supporting me and taking steps in my journey. So thank you so much. I love and appreciate you both. Amen. Let's just give our pastors a hand. It's a blessing. Hallelujah. To have them. Truly, truly a blessing. Well, before we jump right into the word, I always love to yield to the main teacher. You know who that is? Holy Spirit. Amen. So let's just bow our heads. Lord, we come before you this morning, grateful and thankful, Lord, for another opportunity to gather and to hear your voice, to hear your word. Holy Spirit, I yield to you. You are the teacher. I ask for you to speak to each and every one of us, illuminate in our heart that which you want us to hear. I speak over us, Lord, that we have ears to hear and a heart that's open to receive what it is that you have for us this morning. Lord, let not one person leave the same way that they came, but be changed in some way, fashion, or form that brings you even greater glory, Father, through their lives. So I just give you praise and thanksgiving in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Glory to God. Well, let's get into it. Woo, I'm excited. So for those of you that like to take notes, which I hope you will, I personally think we retain so much more of the Word of God when we're interactive with the Word. How many of you agree with that? All right, so get your pen and paper handy, or if you want an app and you like to take notes, I'm going to have a lot of scripture that I share, but um, I think when we have a chance to interact as the word is going forth, we are retaining more, and then we can go back and let the Holy Spirit continue to minister that to us. Praise God. So today's message is called Steadfast Living. Steadfast Living. Amen. Amen. And so um, let's just first define steadfast. It means to be fixed, to be firm in direction or purpose, unwavering and resolute. Just take that in for a moment. To be steadfast in the way that we live, it means that we are fixed, we are firm in the direction or the purpose that God has given us, right? Right? We're unwavering in that, and we're resolute. How many of you know in this crazy world we need to be this way? Yeah. Right? Absolutely. There's a lot going on, and we need to make sure that we're hearing the Word of God, and we're allowing that Word to continue to keep us on the course that God has on so we can complete the purpose for our life. Um, Jesus was one of the greatest demonstrations of steadfastness. Amen? Amen. Uh, he was very fixed and very firm on his purpose and making sure that the assignment he had for coming here to the earth was completed. And he did this regardless of what was happening to him and around him. He was fixed. He was firm. How many of you, wave of hands, would say, you know, Kim, that is easier said than done. Yes, it is, right? It is. It's hard. And I want to talk for a moment on some of the reasons why it's difficult to remain fixed and firm and resolute and unwavering in what God's called us to do. In John 16, Jesus is preparing his disciples for his departure from the earth. He's letting them know he's going to go away, but he will come again. And then in verse 33, he tells them, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. What are we going to have in this world? Trouble. And then he says, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Is that good news? Yeah, that is good news because there's a lot going on in this world. But to know that Jesus has already overcome it 
and Jesus is in us, what does that mean? We also have overcome. Amen? Praise God. So um, in 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 9, Paul is talking about the experience he's had in working out his journey with God. And he says, being hard-pressed on every side. Have you ever felt squeezed and pressured in this life? I mean, you're like, if I get pushed one centimeter more, oh, I'm going to be a pancake, right? I don't know if I can take it, Lord. He was saying he was pressed on every side, but not crushed. He was not crushed. And then he said, perplexed. Anytime you kind of went, wow, how is this going to work out? I mean, I don't get it. Like, why is this happening this way? Anybody ever felt that way? Perplexed, right? And then he goes on to say, but not in despair. He still had a hope and a faith. God, you're in this somewhere. Somehow, working it out. I don't know how, but, but you're there. And then he says, persecuted, but not abandoned. You know, that's one thing I love about the Lord. He tell, he's telling us the truth. You know, no fantasy here. <laughs> Okay, you're going to have trouble in this life, but I'm going to be with you through it. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. How many of you know that's good? That's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Amen? That's one you can rely on no matter what is going on. I love that kind of friend in Jesus. And then he says, struck down but not destroyed. Anybody ever felt like you got some news and it was like a sucker punch, a gut punch? Like it just knocked the wind out of you and you're like, whoa, right? Right? And you may have fallen down, but guess what? You get back up. Amen? So that's what he's saying. I'm, I've been struck down, but then he says, not destroyed. Not destroyed. So I just wanted to share, yes, we're going to have difficulties. We're going to have some hardships. And there will be some persecution that we bear because we bear the name of Christ. But there is the good news, and this is it. All of heaven. How much of heaven? All of heaven is on our side. That is good news. Praise God. And you know, I don't even have this in my notes, but the word says when God is for you, what? Who can be against you? Right? Amen. So all of heaven is on our side and we are equipped for every good work. So some of you may say, well, I don't feel equipped. (laughs) I don't feel strong. I don't feel confident. It's not about a feeling. It's about a knowing. If God spoke to you and said, this is what I've done in you and this is what I'm doing in you, bless God, that's what he's doing, right? Amen. So you are equipped for every good work, amen? And then the other good news is, Jesus said, when I go, I'm going to send another. He's going to send Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come alongside us and help us walk out this journey, amen? And provide us the strength that we need. So if someone that say, you know, I received Christ, but I don't know if I received really the power and the filling of the Holy Spirit. I want to invite you to ask him, fill me, empower me, so that you can walk out your journey and be what? Steadfast. Say steadfast. 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 Amen. So we want to be steadfast in our devotion to God and our fulfillment of our purpose that he's given us, just like Jesus demonstrated being steadfast. So I want to share a couple of scriptures on steadfast. The first is Hebrews 10, 23, and it says, Without wavering, let us hold tightly to the hope we say we have, for God can be trusted. What can he be? Trusted to keep his promise. He wants us to hold tightly to our hope our hope in Christ, our hope for eternal life, our hope for him to come through and help us when we need that help. He wants us to hold on to our hope. And then in Hebrews 10, 36, now this is the Amplified. I I grew up on the Amplified. I love the Amplified version. It just expounds in so many ways that have helped me to better understand what God's word is saying. So in Hebrews 10, 36, in the Amplified, it says, For you have need of steadfast patience and endurance. What kind of patience and endurance? Steadfast. Yeah. Remember, that's being firm and fixed, resolute and unwavering. And it says, So that you may perform and fully accomplish the will of God. And thus receive and carry away and enjoy to the full what he has promised. Isn't that good? 
You know, but it does require something from us, right? We have to be steadfast in our patience and our endurance. Now, those note takers out there, or you're feverishly typing it on your phone, right? Here's three main points I want to share with you today that's going to help us remain steadfast in our purpose and our direction to which God has called us. The first one is know God's word, his character, and his ways. That's a must. Number two is to trust and obey him. Mm, that's not always easy, but necessary. And the last one, make prayer a lifestyle. Those are the three things we're going to tackle this morning. So the first one, to know God's word, character, and ways, we must know God for ourselves. Know him for ourselves. So, you know, we have what the Bible calls five-fold ministry gifts. And they're there to edify us, build us up, prepare us, get us ready to do kingdom work. And those five gifts, the, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, teachers, and pastors, right? In particular, I want to focus on pastors and teachers. We have an excellent pastor right here. Amen? And every Sunday when we come, we get the opportunity to get the word. And so he lays out a great meal to partake of every single week. Amen? But we have to do something with that meal. We have to go back to it over and over again so that we can get it for ourselves. Amen? And not just here at one time. So um, the Word of God says in 2 Timothy 2.15, also amplified version, it says, tell us, it tells us we are to study. What are we to do? Study. And to do our best to present ourselves before God approved. And this means tested by trial. And be able to correctly handle and skillfully teach the Word of God. This is so powerful. You know, this age right now, we have so much technology available to us. And it brings a lot of convenience, which is awesome, like podcasts, right? For example, I can be on the run listening to the Word of God all day long, and that's lovely. But how many of you know that does not take the place of personal study time? right? We have to have that time in the Word for ourselves, not just hearing it here and there, but really taking it in. When we only get this in bits, we may put it together very fragmentedly. And then we're not doing that second part of the Scripture that talks about being able to care, uh, correctly handle it and skillfully teach it. And I have to say, this is really big because this is a lot of times where church hurt can come in, where people don't know the word as they should, and they're speaking things, but it's not all correct. And now I got a piece here and a piece there, and it's your thought and your belief and your philosophy, and somehow it's all jumbled up and mixed up, and it's like, okay, I'm, what did God say? Right? We don't know. So it's so important that we know that word for ourselves, and I'm going to talk more about why that's important as we go on. Amen. So when we study and meditate on God's word, we're learning more about his character, his ways, his promises, and his boundaries. How many of you know boundaries are not meant to cut out fun, but to keep you safe? That's what the boundaries of God's word is, the things in the, in the word where God says, touch not this, right? But do this. That's for our God. And when we get into the word, we find out what that is. In John 10, Jesus is sharing the relationship between a shepherd and his sheep. In verses 4 and 5, he says, His sheep follow him because they know his voice, and they won't follow the voice of a stranger. In the way, you know, the way we know God's voice is to know his word. When you know his word, you know his voice. That's so important. That's why we got to get into the word for ourselves. When we know his word, it helps us to discern between God's truths and Satan's lies. We really need that in this day and time, right? And also it helps us to discern kingdom principles from worldly philosophies. That is huge. If we're not careful, our ears can start lingering over here to what sounds good, but is that God's word? Is that what he said? I want 
make sure that I stay on track. Why? Because I want to stay steadfast in the direction God's calling me. Do you want to stay steadfast in the direction God's calling you? Yeah. Well, we need to know his voice. We need to know his word so that we can be. Praise God. When we know and experience him, so this is, that's why knowing the word of God is so powerful. Because that's good, you know, that Pastor Levi shared, and he's excited about it. And he knows what the word of God says for him. But do we know what it's saying to us? What is God talking to me about specifically? When I know that, and I understand God's voice, I can spot a counterfeit voice. And there's some counterfeit voices out here, saints. We need to be able to spot them, Amen. And when we can spot the counterfeit voice, then we are less likely to be distracted, detoured, and derailed off of what God has called for us, what our purpose is. Mm. Anybody getting anything out of this but me? <laughs> I, I preach my own self happy right now. I'm like, Lord, this is so good. I receive it. Amen. All right. So the second thing I wanted to share is about trusting and obeying him. This is where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. I can hear the word and, oh, it's great and it's a blessing. And then God said, now I want you to not just be a hearer, like James talked about. What's he want us to be? A doer of the word, right? And so this is where the trust and obedience comes in. Mm. In Luke chapter 6, Jesus is teaching a multitude and he's talking to them about godly character, about how to treat each other. And he's even talking about how to treat your enemies, right? So he's, he's giving them some lessons about the way he does it in his kingdom, the way he wants us to live. And then he goes on to say in verse 46 of Luke 6, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do or you don't practice what I say? Right? He's saying, okay, you're saying I'm Lord, but then if I'm asking you to do something, you're not following through. Like, well, there's a disconnect. What's going on with that? Right? I remember I was in one of my devotion times, and the Lord spoke to me, and he said, Kim, people don't follow who they don't trust. And he said, and that includes me. And I was like, whoa, okay, Lord. And so I just kind of pondered that for a little bit. And as I did, I started making another connection. I was like, well, okay, well, then if it's hard to follow because you don't trust, then maybe the trust is lacking because you don't know. Is it that I don't know you well enough, Lord? Right? That's something we want to ask ourselves. Do we really know God's character, his ways, his promises, for example, right? So when he speaks to us, it's much easier to obey. The Lord was starting to help me see that, you know, this is a struggle even in the body. That it's hard to trust and obey because we don't really have that knowledge of him. Not just knowing here, but that knowing right here. Because I have a relationship with you. Amen? Oh, thank you, Lord. If we struggle to trust him, guess what, saints? We're going to struggle to obey him. So we need to be able to trust the Lord. And you know, sometimes God is going to ask us to do hard things. Anybody been in that situation? Anybody in that situation right now? <laughs> God is asking you to do something that's hard. It's difficult. Maybe it is to give up something, walk away from something, forgive somebody, right? And those things can be difficult, especially if it's something I really wanted or it's something I feel really validated in. And you're saying to do something different than how I feel? How many of you know that's hard? Mm-hmm. It's difficult. But we just need to know that whatever it is that God is calling us to do, that he has our best interests at heart. We have to know that he loves us, right? Um, one of my favorite scriptures is Jeremiah 29, 11. He says, I know the plans I have for you right? They're good and not evil, right? They're to give you hope and a future. Now, personally, I had a little bit of a struggle in trusting God for a while because I had some disappointments in my own life in reference to men. And so I'm looking at God as a man, and then he reminds me in his word, you know, 
I'm not a man that I should lie, right? Or go back on anything I've promised you. So when I started making sure I took him out of that natural mentality that I had, and I saw him as deity, I saw him, as Pastor said earlier today, faithful, right? Then I knew, okay, God, you do have my best interest at heart. You do love me, right? There is something that you have for me, and I want to trust you for it. And can I go further to say I'm going to trust you even if I don't understand it? Even if I don't agree, right? I don't like it, Lord. Okay. He heard that. That didn't scare him off, right? But he's wondering after you got that all out, what's going to be the end result? Is it going to be nevertheless, Lord? Not my will, but your will be done. Amen. That's where he wants us to be. Praise God. This reminds me of a picture of a little girl. She's holding a teddy bear, small teddy bear. And she's standing across from Jesus. And he's got a teddy bear as well. It's much larger and it's behind his back. And he has his hand out to her. And this is the question. Do you trust me? Do you trust me? That's the question I want to pose to all of us. Do we trust him? If he's asking us, can I have that? Will you let me have that secret part of you? Will you let me have that area that's tender, that hurts? Will you let me have that disappointment? Will you, will you give it to me? We have to know that if he's asking us to do a hard thing, God already knows he can walk us through that. We can get to the other side of that. There's victory on the other side of that hard thing. Amen? And this comes back to, it's much easier for me to say, yes, Lord, I'm going to try when I know him. And how do you know him? You know him through his word, right? You have that experience with him through his word. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Jeremiah 17, 7, it says, but blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. Blessed. Um, one translation of that says to be happy or to be envied. Blessed. Mm. And then Isaiah 119 says, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Willing and obedient. How many are willing to trust the Lord? Yes. Even though you know it's going to be hard, your knees are knocking. Oh, God. You're a little nervous. You're a little afraid. What's going to be next? God, if you ask me to do this, then what? Anybody felt like that? Yeah, that's the truth, right? We have this natural walk that we're going through. God knows that. Jesus went through it as well, right? But at the end, are we going to trust and we're going to obey him? Praise God. All right, I'm going to move on to our third and final. So remember, the three things we need to do to be steadfast in our journey to fulfill our purpose. We first got to know God's word, his ways, his character, yes? And then we got to trust and obey him. And then the third is let's make prayer a lifestyle. So, so important. Now, pastor mentioned I'm over our prayer group. And so anybody that knows me, like this is one of the favorite aspects of my relationship with God is prayer. I love to worship him. Sometimes I'm really loud over here. So I ain't gonna apologize for that because I'm serving my Jesus. Amen. But I love to worship him. And then I love to hear him talk back to me, I, that, that, oh my gosh, that just fills me up. This is what I love about the Lord. So prayer provides us with the means to communicate to God, right? And our communication, guess what? It should be two-way, two-way. So I like to look at it like there's an upload. Okay, I'm uploading my praise and my worship to the Lord and even confession. Lord, I miss it this week. God help me. I had a struggle this week. I, 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 oh, I should have done a little bit better on this. And I'm also uploading a request. God, I need you to help me. I need this. I need help, whatever it is. But even after that upload, let's give space for a download. All right? For God to speak back to us, to answer us, right? And to even refill us, to strengthen us. God wants to speak too. I love talking. Have you noticed? <laughs> I love to talk. And I have to be reminded sometimes, Kim, zip it. 
be quiet. And just let God have a moment to speak. And my God, every time I do that, I walk away shouting and dancing in my living room. I mean, I'm excited. I'm like, Lord, that was so good. I'll be like, you're so awesome. Oh, my goodness. So there's so much that comes out of our communication with God. And so it should be two-way. It should be any time, and it should be often, right? And then just know that your communication or your prayer time, it involves praise. It involves worship. It is incorporating your confession. It also involves your request, amen? All of that is a part of your expression of praise, and prayer to the Lord. 2 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, Rejoice always. How often? Always. Pray continually. How often? Continually. And give thanks in all circumstances. How many circumstances? All. And I know sometimes you were like, really? This isn't a good situation, Lord. Why would I be excited about it? You may not be excited about the situation, but you're excited about the one who's holding you in the situation. Amen? That's what I can praise him about. You're faithful, Lord. You won't leave me. You won't forsake me. You're with me, God. He wants to connect with us. He wants to meet our need, and he wants to lead us. This all is through prayer, our communication with him. Jeremiah 29, 12 through 13. In the Amplified, it says, Then you will call on me, and you will come and pray to me, and I will hear and heed you. Then you will seek me, inquire for, and require me as a vital necessity. Is God a vital necessity for you? I mean, can you imagine going a day without him? Like, do you need to hear from him? Do you need to feel his presence? He should be that vital to our existence every single day. Amen? If we are getting into routine, I go to church because that's what I grew up doing. That's what I know to do. I raise my hands and I pray because that's just what you're supposed to do. But is there a connection? Am I really connected and rooted? And some of us have been serving God for a long time. But let me tell you, sometimes we have to be careful we don't get into this mediocre and mundane and it's just the norm, right? Keep it fresh. Keep it alive. Stay on fire. Stay on the edge in serving God. Amen? Oh, whoo, my Jesus. He's so good. Glory, glory, glory. In 1 John 5, 14, 15, it says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. This is so good. That's why we need to know the word of God, because when you pray the word of God, God is going to honor his word. He is not obligated to just do any and everything, but he's obligated himself to his word. That's why when we know the word and we pray the word, you got the attention of God. He's hearing you. And then he's saying, whatever you're asking and with the will, it's going to be done. Is that a good guarantee or what? Yeah. I mean, I'm like, wow, this is so good, Lord. So he says, and if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. You can be confident. I remember hearing a person say, you know, I feel like I can't get a prayer through. Well, are you praying the word? Because if you pray in the word, God's hearing that. Yes, he is. Now, he may not answer in the time and in the exact way you want. Because we all, I like to say I can only see past my nose right here. He sees way beyond that. Is that right? And he already knows what's coming up, what's going to be around the corner, what I'm going to need, and so forth. And sometimes I've gone back and said, God, I want to thank you. You didn't answer. <laughs> the thing I was asking for. I had no idea what was coming, but you did. So when we pray the word, we can be confident he's hearing that. He will answer his word. Jude 1.20 says, But you, dear friends, must continue to build your lives on the foundation of your holy faith and continue to pray as you are directed by the Holy Spirit. I just want to encourage you. That God wants to connect with you. 
He wants to meet your need and he wants to lead you. And all of that can be happening in your communication, in your prayer life, in your time to connect with him through praise, through worship, through thanksgiving, even confession. Lord, that vulnerability is key. Don't let pride steal it. Don't let it. Cast it down quick. Lord, I don't understand it. I don't get it. They really tick me off. I'm upset. I'm this and that. But I'm about to give it to you, Lord, because I'm not going to let nothing get in the way. I want the fullness of what you want for me. I'm laying it down, Lord. I'm laying it down. Amen? The Holy Spirit will always direct us in the will of God. And if we make it a habit to seek his guidance, this right here is key. We are going to be less likely to give in to temptation that will steer us off the path we've been called to. It's so important to have Holy Spirit right at the center of everything going on in our life. He knows what's going on. He knows what we're dealing with. He'll speak to us and give us that ability to be steadfast. Remember that is to be fixed, to be firm in the direction or the purpose, to be unwavering and resolute in whatever he's called us to do. We can't do that by ourselves. How many know this, right? We cannot do that by ourselves. But with God, what does the Lord say? We can do all things through him who gives us strength. Amen? Glory, glory, glory. Mm, thank you, Jesus. I just want to end with this. When we know God's word, we become more acquainted with his character and his ways. Knowing more about him fosters more trust and less hesitancy to obey him. Building a lifestyle of prayer will allow God to come alive in us. That song we were singing, come alive in the name of Jesus, right? Come alive in me, Lord. When we know his word and we spend time in his presence, he comes alive in us and we start to build an intimate connection with him. And it provides us with the power of the Holy Spirit to be steadfast in our journey. Let's close our eyes for a moment. I just want to pray over this word. Father, thank you for the word that you brought through me today that you wanted to share, Lord. And I'm just trusting and believing that, Lord God, you have spoken to each of us and you've highlighted in us whatever it is you wanted us to focus on. Is it getting in your word more, Lord God, so that we may know you, really experience you, God? Is it to trust and obey you, Father, beyond what we think and how we feel? Or is it to start building, Lord, a stronger prayer life to make it a lifestyle? Whatever it is, Holy Spirit, I'm asking for you to just stir it up in us in the name of Jesus. If you're saying, you know, one of those things touched me today. God spoke something to me today. With your eyes closed, I just want you to raise your hand up. I want to pray over you. There's something that the Lord spoke. Amen. I see some hands going up. Lord, you see all the hands raised, Father God. All the hearts that are willing, Lord Jesus. Wanting you, Father God, to come in their life in the area in which you highlighted and to have your way. And I'm just praying, Lord God, for your anointing to break off, Lord God, every hindrance, any barrier, anything that is getting in the way of them, Lord God, experiencing the fullness of you and what you have for them, Lord God. I'm praying, Lord, that they would be encouraged in this word, Lord Jesus. You said you've overcome the world. Remind them they're overcomers in you, Lord God. And I pray, Lord Jesus, where any of us, Lord God, have gotten stagnant in our walk in any area, Lord God, help us to come out of that place. And I just pray a fresh fire upon us, Lord God. Stir it up, Lord, and walking fully in all that you've called us to. Help us to be steadfast, Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, for each and every one. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would also keep your eyes closed.